have this list in our number 10 spot, we have Sparkle Muffin. These guys are colloquially named Sparkle Muffin, but they belong to an Australian jumping spider species of peacock spiders. They were first discovered quite recently in 2015 in the forest of Wandul National Park. They are around 10 millimeters big, but can jump lengths that are 50 times their own size, which is both impressive and horrifying if you're afraid of spiders like I am. The females in this species have a more plainly colored back, but the males are really where things get interesting. The male spiders have bright and beautiful colored backs, which make them look like a spider not from this planet. Spiders already look a little strange, so seeing one that is less creepy and more stunning is kind of confusing. These colors are of course to attract a mate and are flaunted during courtship. In our number 9 spot today we have the axolotl. Before I dive into this one guys, please don't forget to hit the thumbs up button if you're enjoying the video so far. Axolotl are also known as Mexican walking fish and they also look like they came straight out of Pokemon. Despite being known as a walking fish, they are actually amphibians, but unlike most others, they reach adulthood without going through a metamorphosis. Rather than becoming land animals, they keep their gills and live in the water. The external gills that many salamanders have are usually lost in other species, but these guys keep theirs and they are aligned with filaments, and this combination is what gives them such a unique look. Axolotls are often used in scientific research because they have the amazing ability to regenerate their own limbs. Unfortunately, axolotls are critically endangered in the wild. In 2010, they were near extinction due to water pollution, and the issue was only exacerbated by the induction of the invasive species tilapia and perch. Guess we're just ending that one off on a sad note. <laughs> like, and they're dying. In our number eight spot today, we have the naked mole rat. Watching Kim Possible was truly the only exposure I got to these guys when I was a kid, and boy, do they look a lot freakier in real life. Naked mole rats are burrowing rodents that are native to East Africa. They're often called sand puppies, but that is one connection I just don't see. Despite them looking like actual aliens, one really cool thing about these guys is that they are one of only two known mammals that aren't humans that are eusocial, which is the highest classification of sociality. They have many physical characteristics that give them the ability to survive in the harsh underground conditions, such as their lack of pain sensitivity in their skin, as well as their low metabolic and respiratory rates. They're also super cool animals because of their long lifespans, which are longer than most other rodents, and their resistance to cancer, and their ability to survive on little to no oxygen for hours at a time. With all these defense mechanisms built up, it seems like these guys really would be able to survive the jump from one universe to the other. In our number 7 spot today, we have the pangolin. Pangolins are commonly referred to as scaly anteaters, and it truly isn't hard to see why. Something unique about these guys is that they are the only known mammal with scales. Could it perhaps be because they came from a universe where all mammals have scales? No idea is too outlandish when we are talking about parallel universes. They are also nocturnal animals and tend to be quite solitary. There are different species of them, but unfortunately 8 of them are threatened in some way, with 3 of them being critically endangered due to poachers as well as deforestation in their natural habitats. They are hunted for both their meat and their scales that are used in some traditional medicines, and they're actually the most trafficked mammals in the world. Guess that was another sad one. In our number 6 spot today we have Alligator Gar. The Alligator Gar is one creepy looking fish, and is one of the largest freshwater fish in North America, as they can grow up to 8 feet. These fish have reptile like snouts with rows of sharp teeth which resemble an alligator, which of course is how they got their name. These fish are often referred to as primitive fish or living fossils because they have retained so much from their previous early ancestors, such as their spiral valve intestine, as well as the fact that they are actually able to breathe both air and water, which is a super cool capability. These fish have been able to be traced back to the early Cretaceous period 100 million years ago, so they have been here long long, long before any of us. These fish are stalking ambush predators and due to their sharp teeth and just how large they are, I feel like these are a fish I personally will be staying far, far away from. In our number 5 spot today we have vampire bats. Vampire bats are obviously bats, but unlike regular ones, the vampire variety have, as their name would suggest, evolved to feed on blood. 
Bats are already a pretty interesting animal in general as they are nocturnal and use echolocation, but these guys really take it to a whole new level. Vampire bats use their senses to detect sleeping animals by their sound and are even able to sense the best place on the animal for them to dig into. Considering there are only three kinds of vampire bats and the rest of the bat species feed on fruit and insects, these creatures are definitely a bit of an outlier. Maybe they come from a universe where vampires aren't just a thing in fiction. If the multiverse does exist, there has to be a universe where vampires are real. In our number 4 spot today we have the Paku. Paku is a name that refers to species of fish that belong to a family that are related to piranhas. There is one reason why these guys freak me out and make me feel like they are from another universe and that is because they have teeth that literally look like a human's teeth. Although they are related to piranhas, they most definitely do not share the same razor sharp teeth or the same severe underbite. And in a positive turn of events, despite their aggressive cousin and their creepy teeth, they mostly feed on plant material instead of flesh and scales. Imagine having a fish with teeth like a human bite into you. Maybe these fish come from a parallel universe where humans have piranha teeth and piranhas have human teeth. Okay, I might be getting a little carried away, but who knows what goes on in the multiverse? In our number 3 spot today we have the blobfish. Okay, I'm sure we've all seen a picture of a blobfish at some point considering it has been voted the world's ugliest animal and honestly, I can see why. Here's the weird thing about these guys though. The picture I'm sure a lot of us have seen with these guys looking weird and, well, like blobs, isn't actually how they look underwater. These guys like to live somewhere between 2,000 and 4,000 feet beneath the water which is super deep in our oceans. Since they live so deep in our oceans, the pressure that they like to live in is immensely greater than our pressure up here. Like without a super heavy duty submarine, we couldn't even try to get that deep. So obviously, if we don't like being down there, then why would they ever want to be up here? So while in their more natural habitat they look like actual fish, when they get pulled up too quickly to a pressure they don't like, they turn into these weird blob looking guys. I also forgot to mention that they usually don't survive that. I feel like we were too hard on them considering it's not their fault that they look like that. But seriously, when they're all blobby they don't look like fish at all. Or really any creature that should live on this planet. In our number 2 spot today we have the fossa. The fossa is a mammal that appears to look a lot like a cat, but it's actually not one at all. These animals are the top predator in Madagascar and hunt day or night and are able to hunt on land or in trees. These animals have had quite a tumultuous time getting classified because they don't really fit into one box. They look a lot like cats but they share a common characteristic with two other species, one of which is a mongoose. More recently they have been put into basically a separate category. This category is for animals that are believed to have descended from mongoose like ancestors in Madagascar about 20 million years ago. That is absolutely insane. These animals are also quite solitary and one thing that is totally unique to them is how the females of this species during adolescence go through a masculine phase. They have actual physical features for a short while that are only seen on male fossas before they just return back to females. It certainly is a super interesting thing about them but it's wild how no other animal goes through this same kind of thing. I wonder what could be the explanation behind that. Hmm. <laughs> In our number one spot today we have the star nosed mole. The star nosed mole is on this list for no reason other than its star nose because what the actual heck is that? Their noses are super creepy looking but incredibly powerful. They're actually used as a touch organ that contains more than 25,000 sensory receptors. Other kinds of animals have the same sort of organ that the star nosed mole does but none are nearly as specialized or as numerous. The mole uses its nose to navigate around because because of the fact that they are functionally blind. These animals have also been dubbed the fastest eating animal as it takes them an average of 227 milliseconds to identify and consume individual food items, which is kind of like me with french fries. Apparently their brain can decide in 8 milliseconds if something is edible or not, which is the speed limit of neurons. If this wasn't already interesting enough, these animals can also smell underwater. That's a pretty cool power! Starting off this countdown we have the ultra black fish. 
There are a couple of ultra black fish that are so dark that they are almost invisible. At least 16 species of these fish have specialized skin, which makes them almost impossible to detect. Their skin is so unique that they absorb 99.95% of all photons. This makes them blacker than black. Even under a harsh spotlight, these creatures appear as mere silhouettes. That's why it's also so hard to capture a photo of them. One scientist said, and I quote, it didn't matter how you set up the camera or lighting, they just sucked up all the light. So in a way, these fish have a cloak of invisibility, and that's why it's so easy for them to sneak up on their prey. With features like this, it literally makes them seem like they came from another universe. In our ninth spot today, we have the brittle star. For this one, I want to take a look at one brittle star in particular, and that's one that's named the Game of Thrones star. That's because its appendages look like the thorny crown found on the second Game of Thrones book cover, A Clash of Kings. Now, what's weird about these creatures is that they don't have any brains or eyes, yet they somehow know what they need to do in order to survive. Like dude, it's literally a brainless organism wandering around the bottom of the ocean. And when fish get close to it, they reach out their tentacles and wrap them in a spiral and then eat them. Take a look at them. They literally look like creepy little brainless aliens. I refuse to believe that they're real. Like, I mean, obviously they are real, but like, that's a creature straight out of a horror film. In our eighth spot today, we have the black swallower. This is a deep sea fish with a big appetite, and it can handle more than it looks like it can. That's because it's slender in size, but its stomach can expand up to 10 times its original size. In fact, it can swallow big fish whole, and then the fish stays in their stomach, which gets stretched into transparency. In fact, sometimes their food starts rotting in their stomach before they even get a finish digesting it. No wonder it was given the name the swallower fish. Just look at that thing. In our seventh spot today, we have the Pacific Black Dragon. Now this is one of the sea creatures that is considered to be ultra black, so it easily blends into the depths of the ocean where no light reaches. Now this creature literally looks like an alien from Predator. Look at this, look at its creepy beady eyes and sharp teeth and like, long chin whiskers. It's undeniably creepy. Now, the males are small. They grow to be about three inches in length. Now, they're the weird ones. They have no teeth, no chin whisker thing, and no stomach. And since it has no stomach, it's unable to eat. Isn't that weird? It literally lives only long enough to mate, and then it dies. Now, the female black dragons are the scary ones. These ones can grow to about two feet. Yes, two feet. And they're the ones with the big fang-like teeth and they have that whisker or barbell. At the end of that whisker thing, there's this little light that can turn on to attract prey. So fish swimming by are like, ooh, what's this glowy thing? I hope it tastes good. And then they go to eat it. And then the black dragon is like, psych, it's me. And then they gobble the fish whole. They also emit poison, which is very dangerous and deadly to their predators. I swear, this video is making me scared of the ocean now. In our sixth spot, we have the zombie worm. In another universe, we have worms that live in the ocean and devour bones. Just kidding, they're real, and these zombie worms are from our universe. Again, I really don't understand how they are real. So these worms are about one to three inches, so they aren't that big. However, they are very creepy. These tiny things like to devour great big whale bones, and their style of eating is pretty weird, especially since they don't have mouths or stomachs. So basically, they secrete an acid from their skin that is so strong that it can dissolve bones. This then breaks down the bones' fats and proteins from the inside, which they then digest. How delicious. Now, they don't just attack whale bones, though. They'll tackle fish bones, even cow bones. I know what you're thinking, how are cows in the ocean? Well, sometimes cows or other animals get dumped into the ocean, so they'll take whatever they can get. That's not even the weirdest part, okay? The weirdest part is that the male zombie worms live inside the female ones. One study counted 111 males inside just one female zombie worm. Just one. Again, how is this real? Like it literally sounds made up. We are now at our fifth and halfway mark with the hagfish, also known as slime eels. Even though 
They are eels. Now, these ones gross me out because they literally look like human intestines. But what's even more gross are their feeding habits. So basically, they consume other sea creatures by burrowing their way into them. Here's an image of them literally eating a dead shark. They literally create a massive tunnel into the creatures and eat them from the inside out. Ooh. But not only that, they secrete the slime to ward off predators. The slime is so sticky that it can clog the gills of its attackers. Take a look at this video of it repelling a shark. Like what? The shark literally went to chomp it and then it got deterred. And the hagfish was left unharmed somehow. Moving on to number four, we have the three eyed fish. Now, when this creature was discovered in 2011 by an Argentinian man, people went crazy. So he was out on a fishing trip with some friends when he caught this fish a literal mutated three eyed fish. Now, it's quite possible that you've heard of this fish before because in The Simpsons, there is a three eyed fish known as Blinky. Bart fishes it up near the Springfield power plant in season two, episode four. So people were like, oh my God, The Simpsons predicted this fish. It was especially eerie since the fish was caught in a reservoir where a power plant pumps hot water from their facility and the water is pretty polluted. Honestly, anything with multiple eyes are not from this world. They're just not. In our third spot today, we have the mutant sea creature. In 2018, a strange looking sea creature was found floating along the shore of a beach in China. Everyone was like, what is that? And they were scared to go near it. I mean, it wasn't anything they had ever seen before, but one man wasn't afraid. So he actually went near it and picked it up. And that's when the animal started moving its head and limbs. This creature, who is not yet identified, has a human-like head with some sort of short stubby arms and legs. There is range from a new species of sea life to a mutated starfish or a mutated sea sponge. What do you think it is though? Whatever it is, it's very creepy and alien-like. In our second spot today, we have the goblin shark. Now this is unlike any shark I have ever seen before. And that's because it has the weirdest face ever. Like I'm sorry, but it doesn't look like a shark. That's what I imagine a human crossed with a shark would look like. So these creatures can grow 12 feet long and can weigh up to 460 pounds. It was thought that 13 feet was the biggest that they could grow to. But in 2000, they found a giant goblin shark that was 20 feet long. So now researchers say that they have no real idea about how big these creatures can truly get. Now this thing has one of the creepiest looking faces. It's got a super long nose with a weird Voldemort nostrils, pink flesh, making it look like it was skinned alive. And of course, look at its sharp teeth. But it gets worse. These sharks don't hunt their prey down. Instead, they wait for their prey to come to them. They're just chilling in the water. And once a fish gets close enough, they launch their jaws out and clamp down on them. Yeah, their top and bottom teeth are attached to ligaments so they can reach out and extend its mouth to grab its prey. And its mouth can launch out to about 10.1 feet per second. And its mouth opens super wide. It can open at a 111 degrees angle. And in our number one spot today, we have the barrel eye fish. Now this fish, literally has a see-through head. Not only that, but the thing that you see there, which looks like a brain, is not a brain. It's actually its eyes. Their eyes can rotate in all different directions. They can even look up to see above them through their see-through head. You guys are probably tired of me saying this, but how is this a real creature? I'm sorry, but this fish has a glowing see-through head. Like that's not normal. Number 10, giant oarfish. An oarfish really looks like a fish snake hybrid as it's a huge, greatly elonged fish. The giant oarfish is the longest bony fish alive, growing up to 36 feet in length. It is found in areas spanning from temperate ocean zones to tropical ones. But unfortunately, we know little about the oarfish because it lives deep underwater and it's rarely seen. However, we know it neither feeds on humans nor fishes, but on small marine creatures like 
crustaceans and krill. It was officially discovered in 1772, and in September 1996, the United States Navy SEALs found a giant oarfish that washed up on the shore near San Diego, California, and it was 23 feet long. The giant oarfish is by far the largest member of its fish family, at a published total length of 26 feet, with unconfirmed reports of 36 feet and 56 feet specimens and 600 pounds in weight. Now, even though those aren't confirmed, the 20 foot long one still scares me immensely. Number nine, giant squid. So the kraken is a legendary sea monster of enormous size and is said to appear off the coast of Norway. But what if I told you it was real? A giant squid was found on a shore in Denmark in 1853. The giant squid is as elusive as the legend it inspired as it lives so deep underwater that we have limited information about it. However, we know it has the largest eyes of all living creatures, grows up to 60 feet, and is frequently hunted by sperm whales for food. The weaker giant squid generally flees when confronted by a whale, however, it sometimes fights back when cornered and it's not unusual to find sperm whales with scars left from their battles with giant squids. It wasn't until the turn of this century in 2001 that humans saw the giant squid for the first time, and only a few years after that it was finally photographed, making it one of the most elusive on the planet. The giant squid has long been known to exist, but capturing it on film has taken scientists extensive time and voyages to the deepest parts of the ocean where life is difficult to sustain. Number 8. Ribbon Worm Most ribbon worms are very slim, usually only a few millimeters wide, although a few have relatively short but wide bodies. Many have a pattern of yellow, orange, red, and green coloration, and they move slowly using their external cilia to glide on surfaces on a trail of slime, while larger species use muscular waves to crawl. Most of these worms burrow in sediments, lurk in crevices between shells, stones, or the holdfasts of algae or sessile animals. Others build semi-permanent burrows lined with mucus or produce cellophone-like tubes. Mainly in the tropics and subtropics, about 12 species appear in freshwater, and about a dozen species live on the land in cool, damp places, for example, under rotting logs. Now these just sound disgusting to me, and I never want to get close to one. Number 7. Hagfish With a name like that, I think you can expect this thing to be quite ugly. And it is. It actually makes me incredibly uncomfortable. I mean, just look at it. Ew. Like, how? How? How is that even real? Now, hagfish are eel-shaped, slime-producing marine fish, and they are the only known living animals that have a skull but no vertebral column, although hagfish do have rudimentary vertebrae. Hagfish are jawless, and living hagfish remain similar to hagfish from around 30 million years ago. There are estimated to be 76 species of hagfish, and some live as deep as 5,500 feet below the water's surface. They're also known as slime eels because of the goop their bodies produce to ward off predators. These animals can grow to be between 16 and 40 inches long, and some live as deep as 5,600 feet below the water's surface, and as long as they stay away from me though, that's all that matters. Number 6. Barrel eye. The barrel eye, also known as a spook fish, has extremely light sensitive eyes on top of its fluid filled head. The barrel eye was first described in 1939, but remained a mystery to scientists until 2009 when they discovered that its large tubular eyes could actually rotate inside its head. This rotational ability allows them to look upward for potential prey or face forward to see what it is eating. Since barrel eyes live at such depths where there is hardly any light, their tubular eyes help them see whatever faint amounts of light drift down to them. They also have two spots above their mouths which are called nars, similar to human nostrils. Now I understand why they're called spook fish though, because they do look extremely spooky. Number 5. The Slender Snipe Eel The Slender Snipe Eel, one of the most compact deep sea critters, can grow to a minimum length of 4 feet, but weighs no more than 6 or 7 ounces. It has a bird-like beak with curving tips covered with tiny hooked teeth, which they use to sweep through the water to catch shrimp and other crustaceans. It has a lifespan of 10 years and has more vertebrae in its backbone than any other animal, which is around 750. However, its anus has moved forward during its evolution and it's now located on the throat, so that's 
Nice. <laughs> their reproduction is done by spawning, which is when a female lays eggs and the males lay their sperm into the water at the same time. Now, the slender snipe eel only spawns once in their lifetime as they just die after spawning. Now, it's difficult for scientists to research these organisms because of the extreme environment they inhabit, but hopefully one day we'll get more information on that. Number four, goblin shark. The goblin shark is a rare species of deep sea shark. Sometimes called a living fossil, they are a part of a lineage of sharks that are some 125 million years old. The pink skinned animal has a distinctive profile with an elongated flat snout and highly protrusible jaws containing prominent nail like teeth. It is usually between 10 and 13 feet long when mature, though it can grow considerably larger because there was once one captured in 2000 that is thought to have been measured 20 feet. With 50 teeth in their mouths, those gruesome creatures command attention, and honestly not really for the right reasons. Interestingly, female goblin sharks are larger in adulthood than the male species. Now, Despite their size, some researchers believe that these sharks could also dive the depths up to 4,270 feet for short periods of time. Number 3. Ozdax Ozdax is Latin for a bone eater, and these animals are also known as zombie worms. The name alludes to how these worms bore into the bones of whale carcasses to reach enclosed lipids on which they rely for substance. With no mouth, anus, or gut, the 4 centimeter long worms survive by secreting an acid that breaks up the whale bone. Now, why do these even exist? I don't know. They utilize specialized root tissues for bone boring, and it is possible that multiple species of Ozdax reside in the same bone. Ozdax worms are also known to feed on the collagen itself by making holes in the whale's skeletal structure. These holes can also serve as a form of protection from nearby predators. Scientists from the Monterey Bay Aquarium Research Institute using the submarine Rav Tiburn first discovered the species in Monterey Bay, California in February 2002. The worms were found living on the bones of a decaying gray whale in the Monterey Canyon at a depth of 9,491 feet. Number Two, deep sea dragonfish. Deep sea dragonfish are quite small, usually around 15 centimeters up to 26 centimeters. These fish are apex predators and have enormous jaws filled with fang like teeth. In addition, they are also able to hinge their upper jaw system, which leads to them opening the jaw to more than 100 degrees, which is scary. This ability allows them to consume extremely large prey, often 50% greater than their standard length. The dragonfish can be found in all oceans, and they also exist at a wide range of depths between the surface and thousands of meters down between 3,300 and 9,000 to 800 feet. It is one of the many species of deep sea fish that can produce their own light through a chemical process known as bioluminescence. They cannot luminesce longer than 30 minutes without adrenaline, but in the presence of adrenaline, it can produce light for many hours. They produce blue-green light, the wavelengths of which can travel the farthest in the ocean. The deep sea dragonfish waves its barbel back and forth and produces flashing lights on and off to attract prey and potential mates. Many of the species they prey upon also produce light themselves, which is why they have evolved to have black stomach walls to keep the light concealed while digesting their meal in order to stay hidden from predators. And coming in at number one is immortal jellyfish. The immortal jellyfish is a species of small biological immortal jellyfish found worldwide in tropic waters. Given the nickname immortal jellyfish for its ability to revert back to a polyp stage when it is starving or in danger, and basically escaping death, researchers believe this jellyfish may hold the cure to cancer. Under normal conditions, its life cycle is divided into four parts. The union of the male and female gametes produces larva or planuna. It then attaches to the seabed as a polyp similar to an anemone. The polyp then releases ephora or young jellyfish in the phase prior to sexual maturity. They become jellyfish, reproduce sexually, and start over. But if they are stressed by an environmental threat, the jellyfish reverts. After reproducing, they return to the previous phases, becoming polyps on the ocean floor again. As far as scientists know, jellyfish can repeat the process indefinitely. Thus, they are said to be biologically immortal. They can be eaten by a predator or fall into the hands of a swimmer, but they do not die of old age, which is pretty cool, but it's crazy that they can do this. In our number 10 spot, we have Sasquatch. Alright guys, there have been so many Sasquatch sightings over the years that I'm pretty sure he lives in 
our universe, but who knows, maybe he jumps between other universes. I could believe it. There was a crazy Sasquatch sighting off of a ski slope where at least 20 people stopped skiing to take a look at the giant hairy creature that looks just like every description of Sasquatch. Giant about 8 to 10 inches, high, hairy, ape like, living in the woods. Someone got it on film, but it's so far away that you can only make out how big it is, but none of its features. Its features were hidden behind a shadow. The people that saw it firsthand, though, swear that it's a Sasquatch. It is believed that Sasquatch is a human ancestor that never evolved the same way the rest of us did, which I don't know, could be possible, but I think it came here from another universe, personally. Or perhaps another time. Maybe it walked through time somehow. Or if it came from another universe, maybe it came from a place where only Sasquatches exist. If you like this video, don't forget to smash that like button as it will really help us out. In our number nine spot, we have Nessie. We Nessie has got to be real. There has got to be magic left in this world. There has to be. I refuse to believe otherwise. Do you know how many sightings there have been of Nessie? Okay, fine, me either. But there have been many, like too many to count. There's a whole website dedicated to people sharing their sighting stories. My theory is though, it must live on another plane of existence and come down to ours every so often, or it's from a parallel universe and slips into ours. Or do you think it's possible that we get glimpses into other universes at times? Here is a video though, taken from the air that shows us a brief moment when perhaps Nessie visited our universe. This video is nuts because if you want to argue that the creature swimming is not Nessie, then what is it? A long neck dinosaur that still exists? Perhaps a swimming giraffe? Like, come on. Nessie is real, y'all. This video is totally showing something. In our number eight spot, we have the werewolf. Another mythological creature that might actually live in another parallel universe is the werewolf. Why? I don't know, because it feels like it should exist. Also, there have been sightings of it every so often, and it's always alone, so it's possible that it exists in our universe, but something makes me think that if it did, then why haven't we seen more than one? It would have had to reproduce somehow, unless it can reproduce on its own, then perhaps I might believe it. Fun fact, a lot of species can actually reproduce via an immaculate conception. A turkey is one of them, mind blown, I didn't know. <laughs> Anyways, here's a very cool slash interesting sighting of a werewolf that took place in Brazil in 2015. What's cool about this footage is that many people actually saw this creature and wrote about it online, and so it does give the picture some validity. He has long pointy ears, strange wolf-like legs, and has a small tail. The shot is blurry as it's night out, but you can still see that whatever it is, it's not human. You know what it reminds me of? Stranger Things. And the Demogorgon came from a parallel universe, so perhaps that's what this is. In our number seven spot, we have the parking lot demon. Hey, demons are creatures too. I had to include this one on this list because this could be a demon or a ghost, but whatever it is, it's definitely not from our universe or it's on another plane of existence and glitching into ours. So the story goes that years ago in Serbia, a woman was being chased by something in a parking lot. She was so scared that she went to the police to report it. The police reviewed the camera footage from the parking lot and discovered something insane. Yes, the woman was being chased, but whoever was chasing her was a transparent human. That's right, see-through. This was such a shock to the police that the story made it onto their local news. The footage is so wild to see that personally, I think it makes you an instant believer after viewing it. Believer in something, not necessarily demons or ghosts, but a believer that there is something magical out there that we don't know about yet. In our number six spot, we have mermaids. A mermaid is a mythological creature that is half human, half fish that is said to live in the sea. Under the sea. For centuries, people have believed in mermaids. Fishermen have recalled tales of seeing a fish that looked human, and of course, they say that every story comes from some truth. Whether the story of the little mermaid actually came from a real sighting of a mermaid is up for debate. Some believe that mermaids exist, but perhaps look different than what we would imagine them to be. There have been videos that fishermen have posted online of fish that could pass as mermaids, such as in this clip. This fish has four breasts 
breasts, a big tummy, arms like a human, but has a shark like head and mermaid like fin for legs. So perhaps this could be a mermaid, it just doesn't have the long red hair and look as glamorous as Ariel. Regardless, the sea is a whole other universe that we haven't explored much of, so I bet you mermaids do exist. In our number five spot, we have gods and goddesses. Gods and goddesses have been worshipped and believed in since, well, the dawn of time. No, they are not mythical creatures, but they are mythical and needed to be on this list. Do you ever think about where the heck the stories about gods and goddesses perhaps came from? Did one person make them up and then others expanded on them? Perhaps. But what if none of them were made up? What if the story of Thor was channeled and it is really a story that took place in another parallel universe? It's definitely possible. There have been a few strange sightings of gods and goddesses over the years. There is one sighting of an eye in the clouds that people wondered if it was the eye of God. It's pretty wild to see and I wonder what you think. Is this a pure coincidence that the clouds look like an eye or perhaps is that the eye of God watching us or a god watching us? In our number four spot we have dragons. Dragons are mythical creatures that fly, have long tails and breathe fire. They have have long been cherished by the people of China who on many occasions have said that they feel the spirit of them or have spotted them. There is a video that was once floating around the internet that would make you think that perhaps they are real. This video isn't confirmed to be real though, but if it is, Aw, that's the cutest baby dragon ever. The second video, however, is for sure real and it is honestly a bit frightening to see. Some think that's a dragon and some think it's a god or Jesus. But honestly, it could very well be an alien too. Personally, I think dragons most likely exist as a whole in another universe, but it's possible that we may have one or two in our universe as well. Who knows? In our number three spot, we have the Loveland Frog. Before this video, I had never heard of this mythical creature. This creature is essentially a giant humanoid that has qualities of a frog. Much to my surprise, there have been some sightings of this creature that definitely make you think, huh, perhaps it is real. Not enough up close and personal sightings though. But perhaps this is another creature that is from another universe. Watch, there is another universe out there where all of these creatures live and no humans exist. Then we would be their mythical creatures. Here is some footage someone found of what looks to be a Loveland frog. It certainly looks like one to me. I would love to know your thoughts. In our number two spot, we have the Yeti. The Yeti is an ape-like being, entity, that people have spoken about as a mythical creature from Asia. No scientist has ever been able to get face to face with a yeti and so therefore it hasn't been officially classified as real. But just because we haven't gotten up close and personal with something doesn't mean that it is not real. Perhaps the yeti has been hiding from humans. Perhaps the yeti doesn't trust humans. Perhaps the yeti is just from another universe. Well, not too long ago there were sightings of the yeti and here is a photo that someone captured of it running away. I feel like that is solid proof of the yeti existing. Whether it is what we think it is, a creature more like a human but very tall, hairy and not as evolved, that is the question. Perhaps it is not what we think it is at all. Perhaps it has magical powers and that is how it has stayed disguised all of this time. Or perhaps he goes back into his own dimension from time to time. Who knows? In our number one spot we have fairies. If there is one mythical creature that I am personally obsessed with and would be very very happy if it existed, it would be the fairy. All of my life I have been obsessed with the idea of them. In fact, all of my life people would say to me that I am very fairy-like. Of course they meant that my spirit reminds them of how movies have portrayed fairies and so that's their understanding of what fairies are. Personally, I think it is very possible that fairies live among us and most likely in Ireland. Did you know that it was once thought that the people of Atlantis came to Ireland as their continent was sinking and so therefore some Irish people would be magical like the Atlanteans and some believe that our idea of fairies are perhaps just these people that are from Atlantis. Atlantis. Very interesting thought. Perhaps they live in another dimension though and that's why we can't see them. Or maybe they all went to a parallel universe. Honestly, we could wonder about this forever and it is fun, but I suppose unless we develop a device that allows us to slip into other dimensions then we will never really know. But it's sure fun to imagine. Number 10. Very recently, in September of 2022, for those of you watching from the future, which by the way, how's it going there? If you're watching this in the future, let me know in the comments. Anyway, in September, 
prominent paranormal scientist and Nessie expert Ron Halliday gave an interview to The Mirror where he stated his belief that the Loch Ness Monster is from a parallel universe that we just may not be able to perceive. I'll be talking about the insane physics of parallel universes in a little bit so stick around for that if you want to see me totally nerd out. He stated that many of the sightings and her disappearance thereafter may be explained by certain people being more psychically sensitive and picking up on things that are existing in multiple universes at once or even something from the past. He went on to say that some people may even walk through portals to another dimension without realizing it and that is where they may have seen the Loch Ness Monster and other cryptids. With so many sightings across hundreds of years it's beginning to seem more and more likely that she can actually travel through time and space and may be a being from another dimension. But the discussion of portals actually brings us to our number 9, the Upside Down. One of the many ways that parallel universes are often theorized as operating is that they exist at the same time as ours but with very minor differences, running next to each other like the branches of a tree. However, this is not the only theory. Scientists are now discovering that there may actually be an Upside Down, like what is described in Netflix's Stranger Things. A universe that is the exact opposite of ours, existing on top, or rather below, our own, and we may have found a portal to enter it. Scientists at NASA's Antarctic Impulsive Transient Antenna, or ANITA for short, have been conducting experiments with very interesting results. Their antenna is located where there is the least amount of radio interference so that they can measure as accurately as possible. And they've found that a constant, quote, wind of particles arrives on Earth from outer space. There are subatomic particles called neutrinos detected, some of which have very low energy and mass that is close to zero, and they can pass right through the Earth. But anything larger or with higher mass gets stopped by the matter of the Earth. Because of this, we should only be seeing these high energy particles coming down from space, but instead they're also seeing some come up from the Earth. And this implies that the particles are actually reversing through time. And this suggests the existence of a parallel universe where time runs backwards and the world exists in opposition with itself. It would have been created at the same time as the Big Bang, with one universe running forward through time and one backwards. After all, every action has an equal and opposite reaction, right? Very interesting stuff. And maybe that's where Nessie exists, you know, traveling forward and backward through time, and that's why sightings have dwindled over the years, and we may have just found a way to enter it. Number 8. Mirror Dimension Now before I tell you about this next one, give this video a like if you're enjoying it so far, it really helps us out. Now without spoiling anything for you, in Stranger Things, one of the ways to access the Upside Down is through portals, some of which exist in water, and scientists may have found one on the sea floor. And I think that if another one of these exists in Loch Ness, we may have found our answer on where Nessie goes when no one is watching. About two kilometers below the ocean's surface in the Gulf of California, marine researchers have been conducting experiments and collecting data from microbes on the sea floor. Way down below, they discovered something incredible, a mirror pool where on the bottoms and inside of fissures of some rocks there are microbes that move in very strange ways and create a perfect reflection of what is around them. Some of this is caused by individual ecosystems forming near hydrothermal vents that shoot out all sorts of crazy chemicals and microbes from under the earth. The difference between what collects on the edges of these fissures and in the center is baffling scientists and some believe that you may actually be able to send something through it into the earth and that may be a way into another dimension. Perhaps the upside down is this where the Loch Ness Monster goes? Number 7. Alright, we need to actually discuss a few sightings of Nessie from over the years because they actually help explain where and when she appears and disappears. Sightings have been reported since 564 CE when Saint Columbia allegedly had to compel a strange creature to not attack one of their followers. But reports stopped until 1527 when Duncan Campbell sighted a terrible beast on the shore of the loch. There were more sightings here and there, but no real evidence until 1933 when Hugh Gray took a picture of what appears to be the hump and fin of our lake dwelling friend. When it was published in a local newspaper, it was accompanied by a note from Kodak, the film company, who stated that the negatives had not been altered in any way. It's strange that all of the pictures of Nessie and other cryptids are so blurry and far away, especially since we all have 4K cameras in our pockets now, but maybe she's just smarter than we think, or she can only appear on film and not digital, or perhaps she really does fade 
feed into another dimension, but there is a live camera set up on Loch Ness if you want to watch out for her yourself. Number six, drop in reports. For the 90 years that Loch Ness monster sightings have been recorded, there were always multiple sightings yearly, and even if some of them turned out to be a hoax, there were still reports. But 2013 was the first year that there were no sightings at all. This came after a string of years with declining numbers of sightings, so it seems a trend was forming, and she had decided to spend less and less time on our plane of existence. But since 2013, reports have skyrocketed, increasing every year to nearly 20 in each of the past few years. Some of this is because of the webcam system that's been set up, combined with the stay-at-home isolation of the past few years. More people are on the lookout, and more sightings have happened. Strange wakes occur in the water, humps are spotted rising out, and strange movements on the shore are just some of the things captured on the webcam. Number five, prehistoric evidence. Now, one of the main theories about what Nessie may be is that she's actually a form of plesiosaur, a sea-dwelling dinosaur that supposedly went extinct about 66 million years ago, along with the rest of the dinosaurs. These were characterized as carnivorous creatures with four fins, long necks, and humpbacked bodies who fed on fish and other sea creatures. They were thought to have existed only in seawater, but in 2021 in the Sahara Desert, paleontologists found new evidence of their existence in freshwater. In what was once an ancient freshwater riverbed, bones were found of small plesiosaurs that must have adapted to move from the ocean and into river and lake systems. And if this could happen in one place, what would stop them from doing the same to enter an ancient river system in Europe and eventually become what we call the Loch Ness Monster? Perhaps if they couldn't physically travel there because a little thing called land was in the way, they traveled through another river, one created and formed from space-time. Speaking of space-time, our number four entry concerns how it can be bent and morphed to do all sorts of crazy things. When Albert Einstein created his theory of special relativity, he explained that the speed of light was a constant, about 300,000 kilometers per second, or 186,000 miles per second for my American friends, and that this constant could be observed throughout space and time. But the only way that this could be constant between the two simultaneously is if space and time were linked. So as someone in a rocket approaches the speed of light, they would perceive time to be slower and the lengths of objects to be shorter compared to someone moving at a much slower speed. So in theory, if you could find a way to bend space-time, either through some advanced technology or perhaps some mystical energy, you could travel incredible distances or through time near instantly. Along with this, the existence of dark matter, which is a strange form of matter that is invisible, yet incredibly dense and makes up five times more of the universe than normal matter does, it can actually bend gravity and space-time around itself. Is there a large pocket of dark matter in Loch Ness that allows Nessie to bend space around it and move to another time? Perhaps she is actually a dinosaur from the past, unwittingly traveling around and trying to find her way home. Number three, the Mandela Effect. I'm sure many of you have heard of the Mandela Effect, but I'll give a brief summary. Essentially, it's a phenomenon of mass misremembering of events, such as the one where it got its name, where before his death in 2013, many, many people remembered Nelson Mandela having already died in the 1980s. There are countless examples of these collective memory lapses, like Looney Tunes being spelled with O's instead of a U, the Monopoly Man having a monocle, or other small changes in our reality, you know, a glitch in the matrix, if you will. Lots of people think these changes in their memory prove the existence of many parallel universes where each small change creates an entirely new universe. And maybe that's where Nessie exists, as a collective memory from another universe that we no longer reside in. But the theory of multiple universes existing at once is not the one that I find the most plausible. Number two, the big bounce. Now, this is personally one of my favorite things to talk about when it comes to theoretical physics, which doesn't sound exciting, I know, but I promise you it's really cool. When the universe was created in the Big Bang, all the particles and energy of the universe were shot out into empty space from a singular point at incredible speeds. This theory suggests that as the universe expands, space, time, and gravity will both be pulling against it as it expands, eventually reaching a point of equilibrium in a few billion years. And when this happens, one of two things will occur. Either the universe will continue to expand and tear space-time, causing the eventual
actual death of the universe, or what I find to be more likely is the forces pulling against the universe will draw it all the way back inwards down to a single point, only to bounce off again, creating another big bang and expanding. This is how parallel universes may function, not because there are many existing at once, but because this universe has and will continue to exist an infinite number of times, expanding and contracting, having minor differences each time. This is where Nessie could come into this, because perhaps she existed in one version of this universe, but not another. And some people are only seeing the echoes of where she once was. I think that the number one spot on this list of evidence may actually be the sheer lack of evidence. Now I know this may be contradictory and not particularly good science, but we're talking about a mythological beast here, so we need to take it a little easy on our expectations. While there have been so many sightings, images captured, and even sounds recorded of the monster, no one has captured it well enough on film or gotten close enough to call it true evidence. Scientists have used sonar, radar, trawled the bottom of the lake, and performed all sorts of experiments to see if it exists and found nothing. Yet there are still so many reports that come up each year, and some of them are pretty convincing. And it makes me wonder if Nessie is smarter than we think. Perhaps even a being of greater intelligence that outwits us and moves between universes, baffling humans in each of them, just for a good time. With so many sightings but so little solid evidence, the Loch Ness Monster truly remains a mystery, and it may just be one that's bigger than we ever imagined. In our number 10 spot, we have a frozen alien corpse. Scientists have discovered this frozen alien corpse in Russia. It was found by two people in Siberia after claims of a UFO came to Earth. Allegedly, it was missed by the Russian military after they cleaned up the area after the crash. The corpse was pretty damaged, but the being was two feet high and part of his right leg was missing. Also, apparently this particular area in Russia is a hot spot for UFO sightings, and there are a number of reports of sightings every single year. In fact, there was a sighting that reported seeing a UFO crash in the area, and so the finding of this alien corpse aligns with that sighting. Whoa, I want to go to Siberia now. If there is anyone watching from Russia, you know, from Siberia, please tell us of any other sightings that you may have come across in the comment section below. In a number nine spot, we have traces of potential alien DNA. Scientists have recently discovered traces of DNA outside some of the Antarctic caves, which could suggest alien life. From algae DNA to small animals, there was so much evidence to support the idea that perhaps there once was a lot more living species in Antarctica. They did not come across any animals in the caves at the time, but they still found this to be a great discovery and have reason to believe that they will discover more evidence as they continue their search, where perhaps alien life might be underneath the ice sheets as there are warm temperatures coming from underneath the sheets. And that would suggest that it might be a place they could easily live in. In our number eight spot, we have UFO discovered. That's right, in October of 2020, satellite photos of Antarctica were taken that had many people stop in their tracks. Surrounded by ice and snow, and with some ice still on it, we see an object that looks like half of a flying saucer that is also a bit raised, casting a shadow around it. As the ice sheets continue to melt around the world, it is believed that is why it has now been revealed, and it is also believed that this is potentially an aircraft from thousands, if not millions of years ago. According to experts, Antarctica would be a great place for aliens to go to because of how sterile it is, so it would make sense to land there. Of course, this is all speculation and there's nothing further on this discovery at this time. In our number seven spot, we have the Alaskan alien. On January 3rd, 1989, NASA's Alaska York Station made a great discovery. They found an alien frozen in ice. Yep, an alien, just like you see in the movies with the great big eyes and bald head. Makes you wonder if perhaps the movies are showcasing these creatures the same because we've already discovered aliens and someone somewhere is telling illustrators to paint them a specific way. I wish I was someone that had pulled to know all of this top secret information, although I guess if I was, then I wouldn't be able to make this video as I would probably have a target on my back. There is no other information on this discovery as it is considered top secret, but it is definitely a sign that alien life has been to this planet. In our number six spot, we have alien eggs. In 2015, it was reported that two friends were walking along a frozen lake in Utah when they discovered the most peculiar thing. There was a strange formation in the middle of the lake that honestly gives me shivers to look at. If you are someone that feels uncomfortable looking at a bunch of dots together or 
eyeballs looking at you, definitely look away. This has the same sort of displeasing effect. Small holes were seen poking out from the ice with a strange formation lying underneath them. The theories around what this is include a UFO landing spot, something that aliens left when they visited Earth, and the popular theory is alien eggs. There were some things there that were slimy, so the two friends left them, and that's why people believe them to be eggs. What do you think this is? Let me know in the comment section below. In our number five spot, we have unknown frozen creatures. More frozen creatures in Siberia, you say? Yep, clearly this is an alien breeding ground of some sort. Strange creatures were recently found throughout Siberia. Many of these unknown creatures were found deceased and frozen in huge blocks of ice. There are creatures that have never been discovered, which are believed to be alien, and even a species of dog was discovered that is so old it goes back to 1000 AD. Wow, well, I guess we're all going to have to plan our trip to Siberia, eh? I've always wanted to go on an alien expedition, so this is definitely where I will be going next. In our number four spot, we have Frozen on Mars. Okay, this one is like a little bit of a stretch as this evidence was not found frozen on this planet, but it is evidence of alien life and it was found on Mars. And Mars can get to a temperature of minus 60 degrees Celsius, which is way past freezing. So whatever, imagine that this evidence was found frozen as it could very well have been. I just can't prove that and I wanted to share this anyway. <laughs> In 1976, the Viking Mars landers detected chemical signatures that indicated potential past life on the planet, or perhaps present life. Eh? An experiment mixing soil with radioactive carbon labeled nutrients tested positive, and even though other tests done at the time did not test positive, the original scientists and others that have reanalyzed the data still stand by the original finding there is definitely a possibility of alien life on Mars. In our number three spot, we have aliens in the water. In an interview in 2017, ex-NASA scientist Alan Stern spoke about the theory of alien life underwater frozen. He mentions that aliens are bound to exist and that scientists should focus more on water worlds. When he was asked about why aliens haven't been found to date, he was quoted as saying that there are many possible explanations. The great majority of worlds with biology and civilizations are water ocean worlds. ETs at the bottom of ocean ocean worlds would be protected from the likes of deadly radiation from space if their planet does not have a protective atmosphere like it does here on Earth and exploding stars. He went on to speak about how ocean worlds are usually freezing cold and that these aliens would be living beneath a thick sheet of ice and that is what would make it impossible to contact them. Fascinating. I could totally see this to be true as there's so much of the ocean that we haven't even begun to explore yet. In our number two spot, we have alien fossils from Antarctica. Whoa, this is a wild one. In 1996, NASA scientists announced that they came upon a meteorite that appeared to be from Mars. A fossilized microbe in a potato shaped lump of Martian rock was how it was described. It is believed that the meteorite was possibly from Mars and blasted off in a collision and wandered the solar system for, you know, approximately 15 million years before coming to Earth and freezing for a little while in Antarctica. After further analysis of the rock, it apparently contained organic molecules and tiny specks of mineral magnetite as well as nanobacteria. There is much debate about whether this fully indicates alien life, but a lot of scientists believe that it does. In our number one spot, we have a frozen ancient civilization. In 2017, there was a whistleblower by the name of Corey Goad, who claimed that it was discovered that an ancient alien civilization is frozen and buried under two miles of ice in Antarctica. Apparently this discovery was made in 1939 by a German expedition, but it was only until 2002 that archeologists and scientists were allowed on the site. Apparently, Goad originally only knew about this secret expedition because of a USAF officer working in the program, but eventually Goad himself journeyed to Antarctica with the US Air Force to witness this secret project, where they have discovered the ruins of a 55,000 year old alien civilization. Not much more was revealed, but hopefully in the next 10 years we will learn more about these findings.